we're back with more of the cast of Cheaper by the Dozen, hitting our main stage at the end of October. Welcome to CTL Speaks. Here we go. <laughs> good one I, I mean i know i said it last week when john and tara were here and i said this was going to be the episode but i'm really convinced that this is going to be the episode uh, uh hello welcome back to another episode of ctl speaks this is your co-host Aubin. and your co-host seth and as seth said we are here with four of the gilbert children um and i will let them introduce themselves to you so you go ahead and introduce your characters uh yourself and then your character and we'll start from oldest to youngest so we'll start with sloan go ahead okay. sloan. Um, my name is Sloane. I play Anne Gilbert, the oldest of the Gilbert children. I, I'm Elijah, and I play Frank, the oldest uh, boy. Um, my name's Briley, and I play Ernesty, and she's the second oldest girl. Um, I'm Elizabeth. I play Martha, and I'm the third oldest girl. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the process. So Cheaper by the Dozen was announced in our season opening announcement party. Um, our CT celebration party, if, if you will. You will. Uh, we're good for that. We're, we're like right there. So, um, and so we, we had a lot of excitement for all of our shows, but specifically for Cheaper by the Dozen. What was it about this title that drew you all to come audition for the show? In any order. <laughs> order doesn't matter. Silence order doesn't matter now. You're the oldest. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Awesome. How'd that bust for you? Oh, yeah. Nope. All right. Anyway, um, so probably what drew me was that it was kid oriented. Um, I haven't done a show in like almost two years. So to come and do a show that was kid oriented, I could like, you know, see some kids my age, maybe. Not really, but it's okay. Um, and like, you know, just get to know new people and, and have experience for it. I think for me, it was like knowing that it's going to be like a family in the cast. It allows you to interact with your cast members more and just be able to grow together as a cast. Whereas in like, I, I mostly do a lot of big ensemble shows. And so you're kind and so in some cases, you're more disconnected from the cast. So I liked having this. I, I like the idea of having this more tight knit cast. In here, I thought we were friends during Newsies, but no, nope. yeah. obviously yeah. not. <laughs> I guess not. Disconnected. <laughs> He was Riley? a printing press dude. He was. I think for me, I just saw like the event on Facebook and I was like, why not? You know, the worst thing that could happen is that I didn't get a role and I had, it's my senior year, so I can just focus on school more. But uh, I just thought it would be something fun to do. Um, I've only ever been in uh, the ensemble as much as having like a featured name, but um, this is the first like big role I've had. So I wanted to audition because this was like my first chance to get a bigger role. And the first person to give you a chance at all yeah, of your CTL you. sitting right here. So I just feel feel honored right now. Uh, but I have you a question. You discovered her? I discovered her. Basically, <laughs> we just made when she claim. succeeds, I'm taking all the credit. Wow. <laughs> So her Little Mermaid debut right there was all yeah. one um, twelve of those children. <laughs> doesn't matter the percentage. The it, it does. It does. Um, so you mentioned your senior. So Riley, that was to you. So ages, yeah, grades. Where are we at in life? In schools. And Sloane said, "Kid, all in school. What school you go to?" Sloane said, "Kid, although she's not a kid." No. So consider yourself a kid. <laughs> but that's she okay. is. So tell I us she has to be a kid. <laughs> if she's not a kid, we're all in trouble. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I well, I'm actually turning 21 next week. Um, but I'm a junior in college and yeah. Where at? Blockade. And you went to where? Williamsburg. High school. I went Williamsburg. Williamsburg. Okay, gotcha. I'm 16 and I also go to Williamsport and I'm a junior. All right, all right. I'm 17 and I'm a senior at Commonwealth Charter Academy. Oh, CCA, okay. I am 13, I'm in eighth grade. And if you're assessing a theme, I go to Williamsport. <laughs> a lot of Williamsport people around here. I feel left out because I did not go to Williamsport. Where did well, you go? we all can't be cool like this. Well, Where did you or go? like the, I went I went to Milton in high school. Oh, you oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great life, you know. I uh, flip it up, flip it up. <laughs> no built in hay from the chariot. Like, <laughs> not, you know, it's not Williamsport. Well, it's Williamsport, you know. 
We sing about Williamsport in our alma mater. Of course, Milton. You do. No, so so Wait, just a second. What? Milton is the weird. So here's the beginning of Milton's alma mater. This is the although TikTok. although Williamsport is favored, the cherry and the white, and the loyal boys of Danville for the orange and purple fight. Still, we hold our color splendor, nor honor shall they lack, while our athletes stand defenders of the orange and the black. Our school alma mater <laughs> does not mention our school until the end of the first <laughs> verse. I don't, I don't know. You, know. you know what's even more pathetic? Williamsburg doesn't even have one with lyrics. <laughs> oh. Well, at, least we have, at least we have that. words. At least we have words, Sloan. Yeah. We might not have a lot. We, we have, have on Wisconsin <laughs> every time the football know, team that scores. <laughs> That's oh. it. Elizabeth just said she's a rap star. No, her, no, her, no, no. Her no. elementary school yeah, had a rap. Yeah, we had a rap. So I feel no, like. Jackson, your mother had me in third grade. Oh, <laughs> it is all coming full circle. Sorry. This is a full circle moment. <laughs> Did Sloan's mom write the rap? No. But can you perform <laughs> you the rap? Um, no. You gotta look on my mom's Facebook for that. Oh, we can find Ooh, it. We can find, find it. it. We'll, put the link, on Facebook. we'll put the link, link below. Yeah. In the <laughs> link in the description. Oh, no. All right. Oh, all right. Lord. Getting back to two brother dozen. So. Um, what has it been like so far through the rehearsal process? We are right now two weeks away from the opening. Actually, it's it's next week. Um, we are next week is our um, our opening week of uh, Chief Brother Dozen. <laughs> got me all, got me all start, twisted. Just start going over. Right? So <laughs> it's been too much good stuff. Uh, remember, this is gonna, airing in the future. This is the future pre-recorded. We're doing great. Um, that was a good idea. So. so um, what has it been like as we get closer to tech week, as we get closer to opening, what have, what have you experienced? What has it been like in this rehearsal process that makes it different maybe than anything else you've, you've done before? Or similar. Or similar. Go in reverse order. Go in reverse order. Sorry, Liz. Me? Okay. Um, I like that. I'm an only child, so I like that we're all kind of like I don't know what it's like to have siblings. So this is just really nice because I get to kind of have uh, the other siblings than what it is, than what I have at home, which is a little to none. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. <laughs> Understand. <laughs> Do you have pets? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Briley. <laughs> 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 but you seem very well. I mean, just to... Uh, yeah. At least you didn't go to Milton. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. at least you're a <laughs> for Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Were you going to say anything else? Uh, no. Okay. That's a great answer, though. I'm also an only child, so it's been really cool to play someone who has lots of siblings. Too many. Too many siblings, yeah. Um, but also, this is my first time ever doing a main stage show, so it's really cool doing a show with people of all different ages instead of just kids and it's been a really fun process there's a lot of times in rehearsal where we'll just like all start laughing and it's just been so much fun one thing is just for me it's been really refreshing to do a show like this because the past shows i've had to do especially as of recently i've had to play more like wacky off the walls <laughs> characters <laughs> So getting to play a grounded character closer to myself is really nice. Um, so I'm the youngest in my family and I don't have, like I'm the baby. So to be the oldest sibling is like really cool because like I get to take on kind of the caretaker mm -hmm. role and kind of be like the, the big older sister that, that I never got to be. So that's pretty cool. So let's talk about the characters themselves. So I want to start actually this time with Elijah and with Bradley because the two of you have kind of an interesting perspective in the way that this show works, right? Uh, last week, John and Tara talked about the narrators in the show, and that is the two of you. Um, and so what has been the, the hardest, easiest, most exciting part about being the narrators in a show where you kind of bounce in between the future as the narrator, knowing who you are and what's happened, and then going back into the story of the past? What's that? experience been like for you well it, for me it's been difficult with the transitions yeah. because the show for it within like the three different acts it's pretty seamless in between scenes because really the only thing that separates those scenes is, uh, is like our sections 
So we have to like go from of like our much different voices and postures as adult characters into our into our younger characters. So it's been difficult, but it's also been very interesting having to have that like duality with the characters. Yeah. It's a great word, by the way. Duality is a that fantastic Scrabble word. You, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> you, I, you know what? I was in AP English, eleventh and twelfth grade. So. Oh, you had it for two grades. <laughs> oh. One of them was one of them was language and composition, and one of them was literature. So. Uh, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. I got it all. I got it all, baby. If every episode just turns into trashing, <laughs> we'll be here. Seth will actually time. show up for once. It'd be great. Me and the kids, yeah, every every podcast. I found my new co-host in season four. Right, is, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm, I'm done. That's a great answer. Right. So like Elijah said, the transitions between being an adult and a kid can be a little difficult, but it's also been fun kind of learning about we have to pay attention when we're adult to more of our posture and we're not swaying back and forth as much. We're talking much slower. Mm-hmm. And then when we're a kid, we get to be kind of more like, not like fun, because it's fun for both, um, both of the times, but we kind of get to be a little bit more silly in a sense. Yeah. Like, you know, when we do our line, we get to like, kind of go off about who's next to us and be like, ah, I can't believe you're next to me in the line, or like <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. So what's that like on the outside? So. Getting Sloane and Elizabeth, your perspective on what's what's that like for you as an actor to kind of have that moment where the narrators now have some dialogue and you're hearing it in reality because you're a person and have ears, but the character itself isn't able to hear what's happening. And the narrators have this interesting insight to be able to know what's going to happen. Um, And how does that influence you in, in your acting choices that you're making? So what do you want to start? All right. Um, so like, these were real people. At one point. Yeah. So to kind of, it's kind of a two for one. Like you have to listen to this, but you also have to do the outside character study of who they were in real life. Um, so I think a lot of what they say and a lot of what you research go together to make your character choices. Um, yeah. Um, since Alvin already kind of brought it up, can I talk about the project? Yeah, sure. Go right. for it. I don't know what projects you're talking about. So, <laughs> so no, yeah, please explain your project. So what yes. were they? we have for every off book date, we've had at least two projects and we will just work yeah. on them and for character she development. Sloan just realized she forgot. She forgot. Her forgot her today. Today. <laughs> it's in my car. It's in my car. It's in my car. Okay. 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 Here. Um, but they're basically for character development. So the first one we did was all of the, the year we were born. So for me, that was 1910. Um, <laughs> I just got so confused for, <laughs> <laughs> for your character. Character okay, reasons. They all look really good. Yeah, and, really 90 years really old. old. <laughs> but um, it's like you get to research about what happened in that year. Mm-hmm. And then another one we did was uh, all about me. And it's like figuring out what your character would want to do, like what your, their favorite color is, how old you are, what they want to do in their life if they're a child. Um, and it's just really cool to well, because it can't say, I want to be a famous TikToker because no. in 1910, TikTok didn't exist. No, it had to do something of that time. If they were watching, I don't know, silent movies still in 1910, uh-huh. maybe? The Nickelodeon? Uh, yeah, I think so. This is a terrifying thought. <laughs> I mean, you feel old. Okay, anyway, Ryan, go ahead. Um, the projects have been really cool to kind of see what like our character would have been doing in the time period. Like one thing we learned is that the Gilbert children used to put on plays for their mother and father as like a form of entertainment almost. And so the projects have really helped us kind of figure out who our character is. Mm -hmm. And especially because they were real people, we can kind of help use that into our like acting choices and also into our projects. Yeah, for me, one of the things was that like, it allowed me to be more in tune with my character. I could understand them more and, th- and think how they think. So it would contribute to how I act on stage. So it allowed me to look at my character more rather than just what they say in the show. Yeah. Or like the flapper, like like the whole fashion idea. So like during the time we learned about like flapper dresses and how they are really popular now the Gilbreths, 
did not dress like that. It was like your shoulder did not show, your ankles did not show, you had on cotton stockings. It's just, yeah. 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 What have you found to be, or maybe you haven't found it to be a challenge, but what do you, do you think it is a challenge to kind of flip I mean, 1910 was a long time ago. That's over 100 years ago, right? So from all that we know now and all that we have now, how do you change your mindset to think now I'm in the 1910s? Maybe for a young actor like yourselves or someone who would be coming up and wants to know what, how do you prepare to do something like that? What's that been like in your process? Um, well, I know if we are like in tune with our characters, um, Kaylee will make us stop the scene and do some deep breathing, which does help us get more in ground but it also helps like feeding off of each other and like what you guys are doing will help me at least watching what you guys will say and do helps a lot with character um development kind of so yeah i definitely agree with liz and also since our characters were real people that kind of helped because if there was something that we weren't unsure about we can at least do research on our character which has helped a lot to kind of see how our characters would act um and there's also the book cheaper by the dozen which has been good because then we can see almost like another story of our of the play kind of just kind of written a bit different i think like even though it takes place in a completely different time period for me, it helped me to realize that, like, at the end of the day, they're still teenagers. They still have, they still have like those impulses and how they act. Even though what they know is very different to teenagers now, they still like felt very similar to how teenagers are nowadays. Yeah, I mean, I haven't felt that yet. Like, I'm still having like troubles with 2023 and 1910. Mm -hmm. Um, even if like just how you walk or how you sit or how you like just simple things like that that you don't think about um, that like when we're in the middle of a run like if, when we're sitting on the couch I'm like oh yeah wait I can't slouch like it's just it's simple things like that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about the process. Um, what has been thus far your favorite moment either in a rehearsal or just in so by rehearsal I mean just like throughout the entire process of the time you've been rehearsing or a part of the show specifically that you are really looking forward to audiences seeing? Question mark. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll go. <laughs> uh, one, of my, one thing is that uh, me and Briley at one point have to play checkers on yeah. stage. And so now we figured out that, yeah, like what we have to do for moves. But the first time we actually got the checkers board, we had to cheat because in the in the scene there's a joke where I where like I have a really good move that that makes me win and she has what he's four well because well, you're well, bad at I'm checkers. gonna wait wait no because oh. that 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 is the moment do you not know did you not know how to play check no I know how to play checkers. But I didn't now, know how to. You, you had to defend. No, no, because that answer means you had to defend yourself right now. So what took me aback in the now moment was, know. I just playing checkers is something I've done forever. I mean, I I'm not play, that old, but like I didn't play a lot of for a long time. <laughs> no, I don't like checkers. Oh, they don't. They don't. They don't sponsor the podcast. It's true. No one does. If you sponsor so, the podcast, <laughs> I like Crackle like Barrel. We've been checkers. talking to everybody. Uh, but wow, that is something that I, okay, keep going, please, checkers. Um, so we can talk about so... rotary phones too, often if you like <laughs> old man Methuselah over there. Like... No, but check, but I understand rotary phones have not been like a thing in a long time, but checkers never went anywhere. Do you want to see something really cool? So like that was the... Hold on, watch this. Briley, if you were to mime, oh, I've seen this, mime answering a phone, how would you do it? Like this? Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Liz she knew it. No, wait. She, I, Liz I, just I, said, oh. Liz, Liz, how would you do it? How would you answer the phone? Answer the phone. No. no just, oh, wait. Like, oh, hello? Would... Hello? Oh, she did. Hello? Oh, maybe it's they, hello? They say that oh, kids, yes, they, they have said that kids, no, because when now we were kids, like this is how you hold the phone, right? Because it was like weird like that, right? But now it. everyone has like smartphones, so they just like, hello? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello? How are you? Like, Because if I took out my phone. We should, ask, we should ask Brian. Oh yeah, let's ask Brian. Tonight for one. Yeah, we'll ask Brian. Brian. 
There, is that, yeah. is that the youngest? Straight yeah. from the yeah. podcast. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Like, we're, 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 we're changing lines. We're right helping. Now. Podcast. We're helping. Changing. Okay. <laughs> Associate anyway. director. Back to checkers. So, um, but I couldn't figure out how to win really quickly in checkers. <laughs> I would get it if it was chess, but don't move your back row. <laughs> Keep going. No, I, I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> That's but how you win. You don't move your back row. I didn't know that. So, <laughs> but, so I want. So I just had to like move my piece and take away Briley's pieces <laughs> because I didn't know how to win. Can you imagine Elijah just like picking his up and just like, <laughs> picking his arm. I'm just <laughs> one, rushing it away. That that one one <laughs> I won. The other one's still better. I win. Why? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> checkers. I don't see any more pieces. He just thinks it's, it's like Yahtzee. Like you're just like checkers. <laughs> that is now my. I'm going to be watching when I, I come and see the show. Watch play checkers. I, I am absolutely going to stare at you playing checkers, and you better not make a move that's illegal. I'm, I might have to say something. I don't know. He hollers. <laughs> hey, 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 not that one. Uh, don't play, you can't do that one. <laughs> moments is one of the rehearsals we had in the rehearsal room so instead of a couch we had three chairs oh. and there's a moment in the show that Anne, Ernestine and Martha all like flop down uh, and Liz yeah. and I are on the ends of the couch <laughs> and when we flop down we both almost fell <laughs> off the chairs <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did not cool. fall they just <laughs> nice and slide right across <laughs> the chair. Um, all right well one of my favorites is it was a re more recent rehearsal, um, and Sloane, you could not figure out how to use the phone. <laughs> yeah. She. Did you get taught by a thirteen-year-old how to? No, use the I, I knew how to use the phone. I just couldn't hang it up. I kept oh. breaking it. Oh. And then another recent rehearsal, um, we she had to set it down and then run back and be all girly about getting a call from a boy, and the phone uh, fell to the ground every time. <laughs> every time. Um. I think I'm most excited for, we have a dog, mm -hmm. so I'm excited for the dog. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was a period. See, when I had, period. I had to say question mark because I realized the tone okay, wasn't. I'm excited for the dog. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, okay, so we, let's end with, I don't want to end with this, so we'll have to find something else fun to talk about. So this story. Oh, it's talks, over already? Oh, it, we're almost getting there. We're, we're, we're coming to a close. Um... <laughs> <laughs> we, so he thinks we talk about some kind of difficult things in this story. Not to bring down the mood, but yeah, it's a I, part I of think, the story. So I see why you don't want to end. That's why I didn't want to end here. Right, right. So, so let's talk about that ending. <laughs> so how about everybody? Everybody, the house blows up. I don't know. We're in, anyway, uh, so what has it been like it to kind of blow up? It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> I've never seen the story. I don't know. Um, what has it been like to balance the obvious comedy, and we've got some good moments that we've talked about now, um, but with the real heartwarming things and the, the problems that everyday families go through, but specifically that the Gilbert family goes through, um, without giving too much away, because we want audiences to see the show, but what has that been like to kind of balance the, the fun and funny with also the, the kind of somber moments in the show as well? Um. I think it kind of ties into, you know, that it's set so like over 100 years ago um, because, you know, the time period for women was very different than it is now. So for me, when I have to stick up to my dad about wanting to do certain things like go see boys or whatever. And nowadays it's like, I'm going to go do it. But then it's like, nope, I need my father's permission. So that's kind of where I struggle in like balancing those mm -hmm. those two. For me, it's it's that I do a lot of comedy shows and that's mainly the only thing I do. So having to balance that with the serious has been, it's been difficult, but it's also been very rewarding having to do this other style of acting that I'm not used to and getting out of my comfort zone. I think with the show, we all know what happens in the end. So sometimes it can be hard not to just automatically just like portray kind of in our, and what we do that we know because in the show we don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's been a little bit difficult to be not knowing in the show, but outside of it, we do know how it ends and stuff. Yeah, I'll play off of that. It was, it's kind of hard to listen, like 
you guys are on stage narrating, talking about what actually happens, and us backstage waiting for cues, like, yeah, that happened. We gotta go into a very happy scene now. Yeah. Let's go into that, and it's just kind of harder to do that. Yeah. I have a question. Hold oh, on. go ahead. So you take it. If you could play any other part in the show, oh, oh okay. Besides your own, who would you want to play and why? That's a great question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but and that you can't say the dog. Darn it! Oh. Oh. I saw it. <laughs> it was in my, it was there. She did say her favorite part is the dog, period. <laughs> period. period. Um, I guess I'll go first. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be Anne. Anne would be a fun Anne? one to play. Yeah. And why? Um, she was like very... <laughs> As Sloane looks at you, <laughs> right? <laughs> she is very Sloan gets pushed down stubborn a <laughs> about what she wants and when she wants it. And I just like, that would be fun to play. I think I would want to play like Joe Scales. Oh. <laughs> the scene he's in, it's very funny. And I feel like there's, it just seems like a really fun role to play. And Joe is played by Hannah, Hannah Bastian, CTL regular. Mm -hmm. Elijah. I think it's very close to my own character, but I would also like to play Bill oh. because. He's because like my character, he kind of annoys his sisters every now and again. Mm -hmm. Bill is just <laughs> relentless. He's such he's such a fun character, and uh, Carter plays him very nice. Um. Okay, let's say like hypothetically, like I'm older. Um, I'd like to play the mom. It would be fun, you know, just to kind of, especially like because Lillian was very well educated in real life and had like a very high high title, and in that time period, that wasn't normal. Um. So just to kind of explore that would be cool. And now, Briley, this is you said this is your main stage debut. Yes. Liz, this is your second main stage. Or Wait, I did Miracle. Miracle, Miracle, Miracle Mermaid, Mermaid, and now this. Yeah. And then Beauty and the Beast at the yep. CAC. So third, fourth CTL yeah. title, third main stage. Yeah. Elijah, this is your second. Second, just newsies. Yeah. And then Sloan. I think this is my third. I can't remember. Sweeney. Sweeney. Was that your first? Yes, Sweeney was my first, yes. Sweeney. Brayden Beach. Brayden. And now this. And now this. Yeah. So look at that. Because we were, yesterday, when, not yesterday, when did we film with Mom and Dad? Last week. Right. We talked about the main stage debuts. We did. And it was, I think, six of you guys are like, it's the first time they've ever been on stage. Yeah. Right? So what's that like? For like the three of you and Briley, I mean, you've done you did classes upstairs. Yeah, and I've when, I've done a few Sprout shows, and then I did the student one. Hours. Gotcha. So what's that like working with your brothers and sisters in the show that have no stage experience, and they're like, "What's upstage? What's a prop? <laughs> I'm gonna pick this up and play with it." I think it's really cool because we can help teach them, and it's if they're like we could be that positive experience. And like atmosphere that could make them want to do theater even longer than this one show yeah so it's been really cool and just knowing that we might be the positive influence that just keeps them doing theater is kind of cool nice anyone else want to add on to that you don't have to there's no pressure <laughs> and studio audience we flew one in for this one <laughs> The packed house in here. Did you have any questions from the audience? No, nothing. Okay, that's all I'd ask. Well, no, no further comments. Are you guys excited for opening night? Yeah. How's the show right now feel? It's... Not, not excited for opening night. Yeah. You're really excited for the next few weeks. Everything come together, right? Yeah. 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 I'm also really excited to the face of John. Loves Olivia Rodrigo, and yes, I he really does. appreciate that. He actually we learned, we learned we learned that last week during the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He brought up Swift and Rodrigo. Oh, okay. I'm so happy about that because we're gonna have so many jam sessions to Swift and Rodrigo. I'm very excited for that. There are so many better options, but so the green room is just gonna be fun. Wow. Yeah, the green room should just what's, be locked. Yeah, just like soundproof. Listen, yeah, it can't be us. So. Yeah, right. You're talking trash. <laughs> mine, mine, your end of the couch. Fine. Mermaids. No comments. We'll be fine down here. <laughs> no, I just need to... Meat pies. We'll be fine down there. Meat pies? Yeah. Oh, Meat pies. Yeah. Mermaids. Yeah. 
Get your own. One definitely sounds more interesting than the other. <laughs> just, just saying. I will agree. That pink fish. Um, oh, I had another one that I forget. <laughs> Yeah, no. Nothing? <laughs> Anything else, anyone? Come see the show? That's a great thing. Yeah. 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 This is why you're here. 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 All right. Can you name their characters or no? Anne. Yep. Frank. Oh. Ernestine. Oh. Come on. Come, Come on. on. I mean, you just, like, you just made her debut and everything. Oh, like, it was like, I had her grow up. Martha. You did. Martha. It would have never. I would have never, would have never got there. I promise you there was never. There was, there was never going to be the Martha. Ever, ever. Thank you guys for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for being here. For being on the show. Like I said, this is, this, is, this is the best one of the series so far. So last week we heard from John and Tara, the parents this week. We I keep wanting from... to say John and Kate plus Kate because it's oh, like close. a giant family. We're almost, we're almost there. Uh, this, this week we're hearing from four of the Gilbert children, and next week we're going to hear from the director of the show, and she, I'm sure, will have a lot of nice things to say about you all and about this experience. Uh, I love the back behind-the-scenes moments that we get with the cast to just to give a different perspective. So um, make sure that you get your tickets. They are available now at ctlshows.com. Cheever by the Dozen opens on October 20th here on our main stage and runs through the 22nd. And then a second weekend from the 26th through the 29th. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of CTL Speaks. Until the curtain rises again, we'll see you soon.